you've marked that number. Uh, this morning's lesson is a lesson by request. Uh, Esther has been after me for this lesson for a long, long time. And uh, so it's something that I had put off for what I, uh, I guess I had deemed more uh, pressing issues. But um, this is one of those lessons. It's a lesson from uh, Created Creatures. I've got a series on this and it keeps expanding as one of my children or another child uh, finds a, a created creature uh, like, like the uh, giant pangolin that they want to know how it might relate to the Word of God. And someday it's my hope to put these into a book, these lessons into a children's book. Um, I don't do them maybe as often as I should, but I enjoy them and the children enjoy them. So you might ask yourselves what the giant pangolin might have to do with the Word of God. Well, I'll tell you what, open your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 1. Whenever I do one of these uh, lessons on God's created creatures, I like to remind our, ourselves that there are two ways that we can know about God. And certainly one of them is from the Word of God. We know and we understand the Bible is the inspired Word of God and we learn about God through His Word. But the second, the Apostle Paul says this, in Romans chapter 1, verse 19. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has showed it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so that they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but became fertile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened, claiming to be wise. They became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and creeping things." So there is a point where we examine what God has created. And I started these lessons in order so that when our young people were out in nature and they saw something, it would remind them of a lesson from God's Word. Now, the likelihood of them being in nature and seeing a giant pangolin might be a little bit sketchy. I can't remember the last time I ran across one of these critters, but uh, it was one that caught Esther's eye, and she knew there had to be a lesson. You'll notice something very interesting about the picture on the screen. The, the baby pangolin is on its mother's tail. Something I want to point out uh, that's really not necessarily related to the lesson is that the baby pangolins cannot walk on their own for about the first three months of their life, if I remember right. And uh, so they, they scooch around and kind of slide around on their stomachs. And that's, that's how they move, uh, obviously, in addition to riding on their mother's tail. So uh, just kind of a very interesting thing. Now, the pangolin, Esther, I don't think you want one for a pet after all because they have a very strong smell probably similar to a skunk. It is said that they smell like rotting cabbage, and the babies in particular smell. So, but what else can we learn? Paul's letter to the Romans tells us that we can learn about God by what he has made, and that there is a lesson in these created creatures for us as well. Now, I don't want to try to, I don't want you to think that I'm trying to water down a lesson just for the kids, but again, I want to give them a visual, a visual reminder of the great God who created us. So, I want to welcome you in your minds to Kenya, Africa, the home of the giant angola. All right, now, something else that we noticed. Now, I thought some of my kids had long tongues when they stuck their tongues out. 
But this giant pangolin, God created him with a very, very long tongue. And do you know what that long tongue is used for? That long tongue is used for going back in, in anthills or termite mounds to grab all those little bugs and it sucks them back in its mouth and eats those little critters. So this is one of those amazing created creatures that God created in this world to serve a purpose. And I want to remind you, young people, that you are created by God to serve a purpose. You may not look as cute as a giant pangolin, but you are fearfully and wonderfully made as the psalmist says. The giant pangolin, just a few ideas to give you the size, uh, ranges between 66 and 88 pounds and 54 to 71 inches long. So if you can imagine that, he's just about, the longest ones are about as long as I am tall, okay? So uh, that just gives you an idea of the size of a giant pangolin. Now, you'll notice something that else that God created in these creatures. When I first saw the picture that Esther showed me, and she wanted this, this uh, to be a lesson, she showed me a picture similar to this, and I thought, what in the world is that thing? because they are covered with scales. And immediately I thought of our, uh, the American armadillo, but uh, they certainly are not. They're more of a cousin of the anteater, but they're covered in scales to protect them. Did you know that in the book of Ephesians, the apostle Paul writes to us about armor, if you will, turn with me to your in your Bibles. I'm sorry, it's Galatians, not Ephesians. I'll get there. If you want to turn with me in your Bibles for a moment, maybe I'll find it. Maybe I won't. I didn't have it on the screen. Oh, well. I'll, I'll get there or not. Yes, it is Ephesians chapter 6. I was right to begin with. Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 10. Paul says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Well, you might not realize it, but that's exactly what the giant pangolin is. His strength comes from God. And from the mighty power of God and God's wisdom, God created an armor coating for this pangolin. And Paul says to us in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Therefore, stand therefore, having fastened about the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness of given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I want you to think about that for a moment. <clears throat> what God has given the pangolin, God has also given us. The pangolin has very physical, visible scales that protect him. But the Christian, we have a shield about us. We have protective armor. But unlike the pangolin, we have to put ours on ourselves. No one can put it on. God created it, but we have to take that armor. Pangolins are not really what we would call people creatures. 
uh, most of their life is spent during the day sleeping, and their activity is at night. So we would call them nocturnal animals or night creatures. Now I want you, I want the, I want you to think about their work, their life is lived when no one is watching. The work they do is done when no one sees. The giant pangolin was created to provide a very valuable service. And I believe our young people are created to provide a very valuable service. You may not know what that service is yet. Or maybe you're an old person. You're still created to provide a valuable service. God created the giant pangolin to eat ants and termites. Ridding the part of the world that they live in, Kenya, Africa. By the way, Kate's brother has been to Kenya. He's done some preaching in Kenya, Africa. This congregation has provided Bibles to Christians in Kenya, Africa in their native language. It's been several years, but we sent some money over to provide Bibles for a congregation so that they could read the Word of God in their own language. And so the, the, the giant pangolin takes care of destructive nuisances in that part of the world. And I, I kind of wanted to put up a picture of one of the congregations that we're familiar with in Kenya, but I, I didn't find a photograph that I could transfer easily. But did you know that God created you to do good just like the giant pangolin? I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Colossians. And in Colossians chapter 3, and in verse 17 of that chapter, here the Apostle Paul says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So whatever we do, we need to remember that we are doing it for God, just like the giant pangolin. Sometimes people around us don't know that we are busy doing good. That doesn't mean that God doesn't know that we're busy doing good. You see, just like the giant pangolin, who likes to work when no one's watching, sometimes it's just as well for us to do our work as Christians when no one's watching. Because we know that if no one, no human being sees what we do, God sees what he does. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is talking about prayer. And he makes a notice about prayer. When you pray, when you pray, Jesus says, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. So Jesus is saying, essentially, if we are doing something like praying just for, just to be noticed by someone else, I'm not saying that it's not nice when someone notices that we're doing something good. I'm not saying it doesn't feel good when someone comments that they can see that we're a Christian because of the way we live our lives. But if the purpose behind it, the motivation is to be seen doing something that God created us to do, that God wants us to do, if, if our only motivation is to be seen by others, there's our reward right there. But the giant pangolin does his work when no one's watching. Jesus says, but when you pray, go to your inner room, shut your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Bottom line, we don't have to be noticed by anyone other than God for what we do and whatever good may come from that. Just think, though, what would happen 
If these created creatures like the pangolins stopped eating ants and termites, my understanding is we don't have termites in the United States anywhere like they have termites in Africa. And I'll tell you what, I still hate those little bugs. Those are some of the most destructive critters. They can destroy a house, they can destroy a barn from the inside out. And just think about it, if we had termites like they have in Africa. You know, when, when Matt was over in Africa, they don't have very many wooden structures in that part of Kenya because of the termites. They have mud structures or metal structures because the termites will literally engulf trees and eat trees. In the United States, termites very seldom eat a living tree although they do occasionally if a tree is diseased. But most of the time, termites feed on rotting wood here, but not so in Africa. Now I want you to think about what would happen to all of the trees in Africa if the pangolins stopped doing their job. Or think about if Christians stopped doing their job. Look with me at Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Revelation 14 and verse 12, John says, Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Christ Jesus. Here is a call for you, my friends. Here is a call for you this morning to keep on doing what God created you to do. To keep on living as God would have you to do. John says it is a call for the endurance of the saints. Oftentimes created creatures like the pangolin are underappreciated. And oftentimes people who do things behind the scenes in the church are underappreciated. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's very easy for us to come, and, and certainly the offering, the collection, is important. It is a fundamental part of our worship to give back to God as we have been prospered. And I don't want to detract from that. But I have said it before, I'll say it again, I would rather have people involved in the daily activities of this congregation than to have a treasury that is overflowing with money. Because when we are involved, we have a vested interest. And this congregation is very good about that. We have people who work behind the scenes that you will never see taking active part. We have people who work behind the scenes. You think, you think the building gets cleaned by accident? Do you think that the, the furnace is maintained by accident? Do you think that the website and the YouTube channels just do themselves? No, those are people in this congregation that work behind the scenes making a difference every day to spread the word of God. If you don't feel like you make a difference, friends, you do. You do make a difference. Now, I want us to consider for a moment what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 and in verse 8. In Philippians chapter 4 and in verse 8, in Paul's encouraging letter to the Christians at Philippi, Paul says this, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. The next time that you don't feel like you're making a difference in the work of the Lord, think about what Paul wrote here and ask yourself, how can I do something honorable? How can I do something just? 
How can I do something pure or lovely? Paul says these things are commendable. So when you want to help God, think about what Paul wrote to the Philippian Christians and look for small ways to make this world a better place. And remember, just like the giant pangolin, life is better when we live just like our Creator wanted us to live. The giant pangolin is not going to be happy eating worms. No, God didn't create him to eat worms. God created him for the sole purpose of eating ants and termites. In Galatians chapter 2 and in verse 20, The Apostle Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The giant pangolin is doing exactly what God created it to do. Ridding the world of those nuisance, nuisancey little insects. Christians, if we lived our lives the way God created us to live our lives, it would not be us, but it would be Christ Jesus living in us and making the world a better place. Also remember that the pangolin works at night in the dark when no one is looking. It's easy to be a Christian when someone's watching us. It's easy to be a Christian when someone's looking and making sure you're doing right. But it's when we do right when no one's watching us but God, that matters most. James chapter 4, and in verse 17, James, the very practical writer, says this. James says, so whatever, so whoever knows the right thing to do, and fails to do it, for him it is sin. We would, start, we would call that a sin of omission, leaving something undone that needed to be done. <clears throat> it's important that even when no one's looking, that we do what is right. I've got just a couple of closing thoughts to share with you. Before I share these thoughts, I want to tell you about a, a brother in the church who's long since passed away. My grandmother went to church with a man by the name of Edgar Hansen. Now, I've told this story before, but it la left a lasting impression upon me. Now, I don't remember a time when Edgar Hansen went anywhere but to church with my grandmother. But I'll tell you something, at one time he did. At one time he went to a little congregation back up by Stockport in Morgan County called Fairview. But for over 30 years, Edgar had gone to church with my grandmother. And for over 30 years, every day before he went to church, he stopped at the Fairview Church building and he turned on the heat. Every Sunday morning, even though he was not a member there any longer, he turned on the heat. Every week he mowed the cemetery and took care of the grass. For over 30 years, nobody knew who did that. For over 30 years, they just expected to come and the building would be warm and the grass would be mowed. 
One day Edgar Hansen had a stroke. And the building was cold. In the next spring, nobody mowed the grass. You see, it's very easy for us to take things for granted. And you simply think that it will continue without our assistance. But at some point, something's going to change. And it will be our job to mow the grass or to turn on the furnace or whatever the case might be. It won't simply just happen on its own. And I think about these giant pangolins, how they eat ants. Now, to me, that's an unappetizing thing to do. I'm sure to them, though, it's delicious. But if you're one of the many people in this congregation, not that we're a large congregation, but if you're one of the many people who is doing whatever you can for God, Allow me to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate what each and every one of you do. And I sincerely mean that. The Apostle Paul in First Corinthians or Second Corinthians chapter four. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and in verse 15. Paul says, For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends more and more, people may be increasing. Uh, for it is all for your sake so that as grace extends more to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God, so that we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are transit, but the things that are unseen are eternal. The closing verse that I want to use this morning comes from the book of Numbers. And we'll be getting to this very soon, hopefully, in our Wednesday night Bible studies. In Numbers chapter 6, Moses was told to tell Aaron to bless the people. And I want to read you what Aaron was told to say to the people of God. Numbers chapter 6 and verse 24. Actually, let's begin in verse 22. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, You shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them. And I want you to think about this as if it were spoken to you this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts every time you seek to do the will of God. May the Lord's face smile down even when no one else sees what you do. Do it because it brings glory to God. If you're here today and you're not a child of God, 
May his face shine upon you as you accept his plan of salvation. If you're here today and you're a child of God and have wandered from the truth, may his face shine upon you as you are reunited with your Savior.